Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Frostbites Gaming Experience, part number nine of the Pokemon Emerald walkthrough. Relatively short part with this one, ladies and gentlemen. Not really too much going on, um, except for, you know, we're going as a gym leader. You know, not too much going on, really. It's a relatively short part, because after doing the gym, uh, the next thing I could have done was go through the next route, but that would have made the video a little too long, in my opinion. So instead, I decided to hold off and, you know, just make it a relatively short part, mo make it mostly about the gym itself. And, of course... A hidden trainer that until this day I actually never knew was in the game. And I almost forget about him right here until I remember, oh yeah, you gotta go back and go underneath to find this random psychic just hidden. Something that, again, until this recording, I actually never knew was just there. Uh, so yeah, you know, sometimes when doing these, I even learn a thing or two uh, when it comes to Pokemon games. You know, it's like uh, back in Gen 2. When I found out if you surf along, there was a route like, I think it was 39, I believe. Uh, no, it wasn't that. Maybe it was 20-something. Anyways, when you surf along the west coast and go down, you find three hidden trainers that you wouldn't know were there unless you looked up a guide on it. And just like with that, with this, it was like, oh, hey, just hidden. If you just go underneath, you know, the bridge, just right over there. Crazy, right? Anyways, so one of the first things we are going to do is we are going to show off the game corner. Something that I've kind of neglected to do in my previous Pokemon games, but I kind of decided, you know what, let's go ahead and actually showcase it because it is a part of the game and I'm not really looking to go on my way to win anything with it or gain the Pokemon or in some cases the moves as well, but there are some really good moves. I believe this is where you can get Ice Beam, um, Flamethrower, and Thunderbolt and relatively good moves, but generally the Pokemon that we want utilizing those moves kind of just learn them automatically but I figured I'd show it off a little bit you have your roulette wheel depending on what it is that you bet on you know gives you a greater chance of getting it correct and getting more credits later on here's the sad thing about it though um, I couldn't show it off here but in my test playthrough I actually got it right I think I went with the purple or pink or whatever color that was a why nut and I actually got it but because I didn't, you know, really bet any of my coins, the payout pretty much came out to, oh, you get 50 bucks, and that was really about it. And then, of course, your classic slot machines that I believe is in every single Pokemon game until later on, like in Heart Gold, Soul Silver, it's like some kind of weird strategy game that you got to do, which is a little bit more interesting to me because then it's not luck based that gets you the coins. It's based on, you know, how good are you in finding patterns and whatnot. You know, and I guess that's why in some cases I never went out of my way to showcase the Pokemon Game Corner because in a lot of cases it was very luck based and the best way to win out was to bet everything on one, sa saving ahead of time and then if you got it wrong then you would just reload and try again and you just kept doing that again and again and again until you finally got lucky and got, you know, the maximum amount of a payoff. Which, again, I did in the test playthrough. Just said pink or purple, why not? And then suddenly, oh, hey, check it out. You know, I got the maximum times 12 payout. I should have just went all in or something like that. But unfortunately, nope, not able to showcase that in the actual recording. So apologies for that. But, hey, you know, you get, you get lucky in instances where, you know, it's not fortunate to get lucky, I guess. I'm not exactly sure. And the rest of this video is going to be done in here inside the gym. We got ourselves two tag team battles. Again, you can do them as single battles if you so wish, but it's just faster and to spread the experience between, you know, my two main leads at the moment. Better off, in my opinion, than just having it all on the Sableye because we kind of need some on Kabuskin as well. And you'll see why that is because this is a roller coaster of emotions coming from Frosty because a part of him, all right, uh, speaking of the third person, obviously. No, a part of me actually was wondering if I actually wanted to do the gym this early or if I wanted to get a little bit extra grinding done ahead of time to guarantee victory because during my constant test plays, because I had to do it a couple times just to make sure, um, I had... I uh, my victories between me and Watson, which is the gym leader, was 50-50. You know, I would win half and then he would win half. And sometimes it came down to a little bit of luck, really. And so a part of me thought, well, maybe if I do Route 117, defeat all those, and then get extra two levels, then it goes from being 50-50 to then being more 60-40. And then even if I do get a little bit unlucky, then I'm still pretty much good to go. <clears throat> and I thought about it. 
but because after defeating Watson, I'm going to go through Route 117 anyways, I just felt like it would just go through smoother if I decided to give him a go around and just take the, take the chance, you know? If I lose, I lose. If I win, I win. You know, we'll see how it goes. And I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, during the test play, even though I'm still relatively pretty decently high level, when it comes to the gym leaders in the Gen 3, especially Emerald anyways, I don't, I can't remember how it was in Ruby and Sapphire, how tough it was, but in Emerald, the gym leaders are relatively high enough level to give you enough of a challenge, and especially because I've only got two Pokemon and Watson has four, if I get hit with uh, an unlucky crit, or say I get confused, because this Pokemon do have confusion based moves, and I hit myself two times in the face, which did happen in a test playthrough where I was confused to myself twice and then, you know, I was slower than the rest of his Pokemon, so it took me out. You know, if two of those, you know, if both of those go my way and I don't hit myself in confusion and still hit, you know, Watson's Pokemon, then I win because I get a little bit unlucky. It turns me to losing and... You know, because of that, it makes it so that even though if you do a little bit extra grinding and keep yourself at a relatively high level with the Pokemon that you have, you know, the gym leaders can still sneak up on you. And again, me only having two, if, you know, I get that a little bit unlucky and say Combuskin destroys himself and all I have left is Sableye. Well, Sableye is a good Pokemon, but for this gym, not exactly so. You know, he can only take on so much just by himself. And Kabuskin, I really need for a good majority of this in ways that you will see relatively soon, I will say, because after we defeat this one trainer, we go through a number of measures to make to help us guarantee victory. But even with these extra measures, we still sit at about a 50% chance of actually winning, depending on how lucky or unlucky we get, because most electric type Pokemon are relatively quick. And especially Watson's, because his are a high enough level that even though I'm a higher level than his Pokemon, it doesn't matter because their speed stat is higher than mine, so they're always going to get their licks in before me. And again, if I did Route 117 first and got an extra two levels, hit myself about level 28, 29 or so, then maybe I'll have that one point ahead in speed of his Pokemon to where it doesn't matter. I will get the first strike, but... Again, I'm going to be going through there anyways after I learn the ability Rock Smash because I've already got it. I just have to get the gym badge to be able to teach it to my Pokemon. And, you know, I'm going to be going through Route 117 anyway. So I didn't want to double back, go to Route 117, come on back, go through there again. You know, I kind of like to keep it going smoothly unless, you know, I forget something, you know, like me forgetting to get the Harbor Mail. There's that one lady to get the coin case in the first place. Something that completely slipped my mind, but I had to backtrack to go against that psychic anyways. I didn't even know it was there. So, you know, things kind of work out a little bit. But anyways, so we're going to be coming up against Watson, but we got to make our preparations done ahead of time. One of the biggest ones is we need to make sure that we have a Cherry Berry on both the Sableye and Kabuskin because there's high chances of getting paralyzed. He has Thunder Wave, he has Spark, that's an ability that can paralyze us, and he's got two Pokemon that have the passive ability that if we use a physical move on them, we have a good chance of getting paralyzed ourselves. So just to make sure that that doesn't happen, you know, or that we're in a good state so even if it does happen, we're pretty good. You know, we just add on those ahead of time. And yes, I want Combustion to be at the full health. Sableye, not, didn't need to worry about it so much, but Combustion is our main haymaker here. So we need to make sure he was at full health. Even getting that extra 7 HP was worth it. And we are going to remove focus energy to get the ability that we learned from the previous gym where we can learn some bulk up because, again, we really need to make sure that we're good for the second half of this fight. We let Sableye take care of the first half, and then Combuskin needs to be ready to take on the second half, so we have him at full health and can learn the ability bulk, bulk up. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, going against the electric gym leader, Watson. He starts off by throwing out a Voltor level 20 with the abilities Rollout, Spark, Self-Destruct, and Shockwave. So already, number one, you gotta hope that this Voltorb decides not to self-destruct on you and get an easy KO. But because we're utilizing Sableye, we don't have to worry about that being a ghost type because it won't affect us whatsoever. However, that does mean he has the ability of using Spark against us that again can paralyze us. And again, Voltorb is one of the faster Pokemon in the game. So after he uses a Super Potion, gets him back up to full health, even though we are guaranteeing with one Nightshade that we will take him out on the next turret, he's still going to get one more lick on us and if he uses a spark and forces us to use our berry ahead of time then we're in a really bad state now luckily the next pokemon we go against doesn't have as much of an ability to um 
electrocute us, we just have to make sure that we don't actually attack them with a physical attack. So first, we have Electrike here, level 20, with Shockwave, Leer, Quick Attack, and Howl. Now, Electrike can only use Shockwave on us, um, and Shockwave, it, its main ability, if I remember correctly, is that it cannot miss, no matter what. But it doesn't have a chance of paralyzing us. So that was the good news. You know, we'd have to worry about getting paralyzed by him so we can go ahead and do two Nightshades, take out the Electrike ahead of time, get rid of the first two Pokemon out of the way with Sableye, and start setting up for what Kabuskin needs to do throughout the rest. So, he's going to be using a Magneton against us, level 22, with Supersonic, Shockwave, Thunder Wave, and Sonic Boom. Okay, so our goal is for his last Pokemon, we want to get two bulk ups to guarantee a one turn hit. Now, because of that, we are at risk of many things happening. For one thing, he can Thunder Wave us to make us use our berry, or the worst thing he can do is supersonic us to allow us to hit ourselves in the face. Now, we take a huge risk because, again, Magneton is faster than us, so he hits us with the Thunder Wave. We utilize our berry so we don't have to worry about it anymore. We need a second bulk up because if we do not, his next Pokemon that he used does have a higher chance of completely taking us out. Getting two bulk ups, you know, one bulk up is enough to take out Magneton with Double Kick. But you need two double kicks in order to take out the next Pokemon. Now, we got really lucky, and Magneton decided to do another Shockwave, so we didn't have to worry about getting paralyzed again, and we didn't have to worry about getting hit with Confusion. Now, again, one bulk up is enough for Magneton, okay, because of the super effectiveness of him being a Steel-type, relatively easy. However, his next Pokemon is going to be, as we will see here, a level 24 Manectric. Quick Attack, Thunder Wave, Shock Wave, and Howl. And because he's level 24, even though we're three levels up, he is still faster than us. Now, luckily, we got lucky again and got hit with a Shock Wave, all right? If he would have done a Thunder Wave and then Combuskin would have been fully paralyzed, we would be, we would, we would pretty much die because, you know, we're sitting at 11. And even then, there was still the risk of getting hit with a crit by Shockwave, which would have one-hit Combuskin, and then that would have been it. Sableye would have been my next go-to, but again, Sableye can't deal with Manetric the same way Combuskin can. And yeah, we we got lucky. We won the 50-50, basically. Again, there's a lot that can go wrong there. You can get hit with that Supersonic by Magneton and keep punching yourself in the face, you know. All of his Pokemon are faster. Um, I think Combuskin is probably faster than Electrike, but Voltor, Magneton, and Manectric are all going to be faster. And you want to use Sableye first, or at least I wanted to, because again, Voltor self-destruct, and just so I can take out the two lesser ones and then let... You know, um, Combuskin be ready for the Magneton and Manette trick. If I had him out against Voltorb and he uses Self-Destruct on me and does a good amount of damage, then I risk getting crit by Shockwave to completely take me out. And once again, we got really lucky that he decided not to hit us with a Thunder Wave because if he did, before we could use our Double Kick and we got paralyzed and we wouldn't be able to use it, then everything goes wrong. You know, then I have to hope, then I have to use a potion to bring him all the way back up. Then I got to use another berry to get rid of his paralysis and everything can go wrong. So Gen 3 is really the first gen where, you know, if you're not really over grinding, then you really got to start thinking about what moves to use in what situation. And you really have to hope to get relatively lucky to take him out. Again, I needed two bulk ups to take care of Manetric. Had to hope that Magneton wouldn't completely take me out and then hope that Manetric also wouldn't. And that getting the crit was nice, but it wasn't needed because I was bulky enough with two bulk ups to be able to take him out one hit. If I only did one bulk up, then he would have been low enough for a Citrus Berry. But by hitting him, I risk... As you already saw, getting hit by static and then getting paralyzed that way without the berry. There's the, there, there's a lot to worry about with this, but we did it. We got it. Up next, we will be going through our Route 117, taking care of all that stuff. But it's another gym leader down. And with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evenings. And we will see you all on the next part.